Please welcome Deval Patrick, Wes Moore, and Jonathan Capehart. Thank you for being here. And just jump right into this conversation because we know that philanthropy alone can't fix problems, that government alone cannot fix problems, that the private sector alone cannot fix problems. And so Wes, I want to start with you to find out how, how do you see the role of government in your work with the Robin Hood Foundation? I see the role of government as, as pretty twofold. Uh, first, I think the role of government is, is the role of partner in the work, where you know, we understand that as a, as, a, as a foundation in the world of philanthropy, that our capital should be patient, but it's not going to be permanent. And so there's a role of being able to be the risk capital. There's a role of being able to go out and de-risk things that you can then pass off to government partners. So you know, you look at the history of Robinhood where, for example, we started funding needle exchanges before anyone else was funding them. And we funded it because the data continue to show us and tell us that if you could fund needle exchanges, you actually could potentially have a real impact on the rise in HIV AIDS. Well, Robinhood doesn't fund needle exchanges anymore. Nobody does. The reason is because the federal government does it. But the federal government was never going to be first money in. So we see government as a, as a partner in the fact that we can put an in initial capital and then have them work to scale. But government is also complicit in the level of inequality that we have in our society. You know, the fact that we have 9.8 million children living in poverty uh, is, a, is, is a direct result of government policies. And the truth is when we say, well, poverty is a choice, um, it is. It's a choice of our society to allow poverty. It's a choice of our government to put in policies that allow that level of disconnection and that level of, of disillusionment. Is that the challenge that you face as a philanthropy working with government, that is to get government to change the way it does things, or to see that the ideas and the, the policies and principles that you're trying to put forth are actually things that government should be partnering, partnering in. You know, it's interesting. I actually see that as a bigger challenge amongst philanthropy because I think that philanthropy oftentimes doesn't realize what a voice and what a role it has in actually changing policy. I think oftentimes philanthropy, you know, looks at, at policy as something that they do over there. Or that policy is something that, well, we don't do that. We're grant makers. Got it. At the same time, how are we going and understanding the things that are not that we are saying and not saying are fundamentally addressing what we're happening? You know, we just put, put together a public statement around uh, the proposed changes around SNAP, for example. Right? Uh, we in our history have funded upwards of around $100 million in emergency food programs as a singular organization. Uh, we have a program right now called Single Stop that we put together. We, we disperse around $13 million a year for a single stop. Here's the reality. If those proposed regulations happen, about 3.1 million people will be pushed into poverty. Nothing has changed about their situation. They've done nothing wrong. But out of nowhere, someone overnight could be pushed into poverty. If philanthropy doesn't understand its role in pushing back against that, then philanthropy is not using its full power wisely. I think there is an appetite for innovation in public, in public policy, not just in government, but uh, among all of us. But um, successful innovation, I think, requires we have an atmosphere for failure. Mm. Politics punishes failure. And so I think we get less innovation than we like in, in public policy. So to your question about how philanthropy can help change government, I'd love to see ways in which philanthropy support uh, opportunities for everyone to serve nationally. Because I think there is something that comes to the person as well as the community from uh, national or, or community service. And a large part of it is just being with people we only think we know through their cartoon image in the, uh, in the media. And as we get to know each other, then maybe some of these things that seem like deep and permanent divisions can be overcome. Deval Patrick Westmore, thank you very much. Good to be with you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>